Hey everyone, and welcome to another video here at Whiteboard Doctor. Thanks for joining us today. Quick disclaimer before we move on, none of these videos are intended to be acted upon as medical advice. Please pause the video here and read the disclaimer in its entirety before moving on. Channel plug, here at Whiteboard Doctor, our mission is to bring you interesting, relevant, and understandable medical education for all types of lifelong learners, trainees, and practitioners. If you want to follow along, we do have a lovely subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of all the videos. Don't forget to hit that like button. And lastly, if you'd like to support us outside of viewing our videos, we have several ways in which you can do that linked in the video description and pinned comment. Stay well, keep learning, and back to the video. Hey everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to come out with kind of episode two of our acid-base disorders. Um, for those of you that have been following along, we are putting out a series on acid-base disorders. The first video is linked in this video description, as well as all the other ones. And that was an introduction to acid-base disorders, going through what is an acid, what is a base, acidemia, alkalemia, acidosis, alkalosis, buffering system, all that good stuff. Um, for those of you not familiar with that topic, we recommend checking out that video first and then moving on to this one. But also if you're looking for kind of uh, jumping right into metabolic and respiratory acid-based disorders, starting here is probably reasonable. Again, these videos are somewhat targeting those trainees, students, practitioners, clinicians, nurses, paramedics, respiratory therapists, medical students, residents, interns, attendings, all those people who are working in healthcare rather than the general public. But we always encourage anyone interested in these topics to check them out, general public included. So today we're going to be focusing on primary metabolic and respiratory acid-base disorders. What are they? Why do they happen? How do we determine what is metabolic and what is respiratory? And how can we really kind of conceptualize the physiology as a way to better remember what drives metabolic versus respiratory? To do that, we're going to start with the equation, the buffering system, that is the main buffering system of the body, and that is this equation here, um, and it's an equation that represents this main buffering system, because the body wants to maintain a normal pH always, right? So what they have here is this equation that's going on in the body at all times, and it's hydrogen ions, right, which hydrogen drives the acidity of a solution bicarbonate ions, which drives the kind of basicness or the alkalinity of a solution. And these two can combine to form carbonic acid, which can break apart into water and CO2. And this reaction can occur in both directions. That's why you have these arrows here. It can go this way, right? Or it can go back this way. Now, when the body has too much hydrogen ions and is going to get acidotic, the equation will shift this way, right? And it'll produce, it'll create the production of more water, more carbon dioxide that will breathe out. And because of that, the pH of the blood will remain normal. Same thing when there's not enough hydrogen ions, right? The equation, so when there's not enough hydrogen ions and you're at risk for alkalemia because it's too basic, the reaction can go this way. And the body will take carbon dioxide and water and form more hydrogen ions to then again maintain that blood pH at normal so that the body is not acidemic or alkalemic. What happens though when this system is just too overwhelmed? When it cannot keep up with the demands of the body so the buffering system fails? Well that's where we get into our metabolic and respiratory components. Because the kidneys and the lungs affect the amount of different parts of this equation, right? So the kidneys can regulate the amount of hydrogen and bicarbonate, right? It can excrete hydrogen and it can generate bicarbonate. So if this equation is overwhelmed and we have too much hydrogen, well, the kidney can just take this hydrogen and excrete it out, all right? If we need more bicarb, the kidney can absorb bicarb into the blood. And thus, when this equation gets overwhelmed, the kidneys can regulate or compensate 
for whatever is overwhelming this equation, whether it's acidosis too much hydrogen ions or alkalosis too few hydrogen ions or too much bicarbonate, by how much it's absorbing and getting rid of both bicarbonate and hydrogen. Same thing with the lungs over here with carbon dioxide, right? The lungs breathe in and out. They ventilate. And one thing they do is ventilate out carbon dioxide. So let's say that the body is using this equation to buffer and there is too much acid, which means that the body shifted the equation this way to try to get rid of the amount of hydrogen ions, which means you're going to have an increase in the amount of carbon dioxide. Well, once this is maxed out where the body is no longer able to shift this towards more carbon dioxide because you already have um, too much, then the lungs will breathe out the carbon dioxide to get rid of it so that this equation can keep going this way to try to maintain a normal amount of or a normal blood pH. All right. How does this happen? Well, number one, this reaction is always occurring. All right. It occurs without WO, without an enzyme throughout the body at all times. But in addition to that, there is an enzyme that does catalyze or make this reaction go faster, and that's carbonic anhydrase. And it's in things like red blood cells, the kidneys, renal tubules, the gastric mucosa, the stomach lining, and then pancreatic cells or cells in the pancreas. So this equation happens, All the things to take away from this little blurb here is that the, this buffering reaction is going on all over the body at all times, but the body also gets assistance from this carbonic anhydrase enzyme in these different areas to make this equation kind of more efficient or it catalyzes it to make it happen more. So main buffering system of the body, when the buffering system gets overwhelmed and the pH of the blood starts to get acidemic or alkalemic, remember we talked about that in that first video, whereas the emic, the emia means that there's too much, uh, the blood pH is too acidic. So acidemia, blood too acidic, alkalemia, blood too basic. Um, when this buffering system can't keep up and you start to get an acidemia or alkalemia, the kidneys and the lungs say, hey, we will help you out. We will take away or increase certain parts of this equation so that it can buffer again and try to return that pH back to normal. So how does this tease out practically into understanding acid-base disorders from a metabolic and respiratory standpoint. Well, another way to look at this equation, we're going to keep the equation kind of in view here, is that hydrogen ions, and remember, this drives the acidity of a solution. More hydrogen ions equals more acidic, right? So that is proportional to the amount of carbon dioxide in the body, so the pressure in the arteries, the blood vessels of carbon dioxide, divided by the amount of bicarbonate in the body. Remember, bicarbonate is a base. So if there's more carbon dioxide, there's going to be more hydrogen ions, and thus you're going to have a more acidic solution. If there's more bicarbonate, so if the denominator of this equation is higher, you're going to have less hydrogen ions, which means the solution is going to be less acidic or more basic. And that comes from this equation, right? So if you take the CO2 and increase it, this equation will shift this way and produce more hydrogen ions, right? Whereas if you take this solution and increase the amount of bicarbonate, it's going to combine with hydrogen, go this way, and there's going to be less hydrogen ions, so it's going to be less acidic. So this kind of uh, proportionality equation is just another way to think about the buffering system equation up here that's going on in the body at all times. And the reason it's good to think about it this way is because it helps us understand metabolic acidosis alkalosis versus respiratory acidosis alkalosis, right? And we did put over here, as we mentioned right here, that hydrogen ions drive the acidity of solution. But what are we saying down here? So if you have a decreased amount of bicarbonate, Looking at this equation, what do you expect? Do you expect there to be more or less hydrogen ions, aka do you expect it to be more acidic or less acidic? Good for those of you who thought about it. So if this is lower here, the denominator is lower, so H is higher. So you're going to be more acidic. 
So a low bicarbonate means that there's a metabolic acidosis. Now, why is it metabolic? Well, because the bicarbonate is part of the metabolic processes, whereas the CO2 is part of the respiratory processes, right? You can kind of think of it kidneys versus lungs. The bicarbonate is part of the kidney processes to regulate acid base, whereas the CO2 is part of the lung or respiratory processes to regulate acid base. So a low bicarbonate, which is a base, so another way to think about it is if the amount of base is low, you're going to have more metabolic acidosis. Or you could think of it in this equation. If bicarbonate on the denominator is lower, it means more hydrogen ions, which means more acidic. And bicarbonate is part of the metabolic pathways in the kidney. So low bicarb means metabolic acidosis. The opposite is obviously true here. So if you have a high bicarbonate, so if this denominator here is higher, you're going to have a lower amount of acid because that's what a proportionality equation means. Denominator higher, H lower. So you're going to have less hydrogen ions, meaning that there's going to be less acidic solution, meaning it's going to be alkalotic, which is basic, and you're going to have a metabolic alkalosis. If this verbiage or terminology is confusing, check out that first video we put out linked in the video description. That's where we go into these definitions. So if the words we're saying are confusing, acidotic, alkalotic, acidemia, acidemia, acidic, basic, hydrogen, all that, check out that first video. But, so these first two here, we can see that bicarbonate drives whether something is metabolic, and the amount of bicarbonate drives whether it's acidotic or alkalotic based on this equation, which is just another way to think about this equation, right? Bicarb higher, we drive this way, so there's less hydrogen ions and it's more basic. Bicarb lower, we drive this way, so there's more hydrogen ions, all right? And I guess we could write that out rather than just doing quick movements with a pen. So bicarbonate higher, means the equation is going to be driven this way, so there's going to be less hydrogen ions, and it's going to be a more basic or alkalotic solution. Whereas bicarbonate lower, the equation is going to drive this way, meaning there's going to be more hydrogen ions and a more acidic or acidotic solution. All right? And again, bicarb is renal. Renal is metabolic, so these are metabolic acidoses and alkaloses. So then what about the CO2 portion of this equation? Well, what we have is if the CO2 is higher, right? So let's go to our equation here. If our CO2, our numerator is higher, it means that this proportionality, hydrogen's proportional, this hydrogen's going to be higher because the numerator is higher. And that means you're going to have more hydrogen ions, more acidity, and it's going to be an acidotic solution because CO2 is the lungs, it's respiratory, so you're going to have a respiratory acidosis. And if we go up to this equation here, we can, you know, understand that based on this buffering equation. CO2 goes higher, drives the equation this way, meaning there's going to be more hydrogen ions, and you're going to have an acidotic solution. All right. Whereas if the CO2 goes lower, here, let's erase these here. So if the CO2 goes lower, the numerator in this equation is lower, meaning the hydrogen, because it's proportional to PCO2 over bicarb, is going to be lower, meaning you're going to have less acid, which means you're going to have a basic solution, and that's going to be a respiratory alkalosis, because alkalosis means basic. And again, respiratory, the lungs up here, are the ones that regulate the amount of CO2, so it's going to be CO2, oh, that's too thick, let's do this here. CO2 is respiratory, bicarb is metabolic, and we can have the higher CO2, top of the equation is higher, acidosis, lower CO2, top of the equation is lower, alkalosis, which we can understand by looking at this equation as well. Right? And again, if the CO2 is lower, this equation is going to drive this way, meaning hydrogen ions are going to get lower as the buffering system drives to create more CO2. All right? So... If the primary disorder is metabolic, right? Metabolic, we said, is driven by bicarb, which is regulated by the kidneys. So if your bicarb is low or high, and it's a primary metabolic disorder, respiratory system compensates actually within minutes. And we're going to get into um, metabolic and respiratory compensation in the next video. But this is just to note that the lungs can work really quickly.
So if the lungs notice that the kidneys and the metabolic pathways are showing acidosis or alkalosis, the lungs will either breathe off more CO2 or breathe off less CO2 very quickly to try to recalibrate, re-equalize this equation to try to maintain a normal blood pH. Contrarily though, if the primary disorder is respiratory, meaning the lungs aren't working right, the lungs are either holding on to too much carbon dioxide or getting rid of too much carbon dioxide, the kidneys cannot regulate nearly as fast, right? The kidneys take hours to days to compensate. So if this equation, you know, this buffering system, if the lungs have a problem and you're, you know, holding on to too much CO2, which is driving the equation this way, producing too much acid, it's going to take the kidneys hours to days before they can kind of auto-regulate and start to excrete more of the hydrogen ions to try to re-equalize this equation. Contrarily, though, if something is going on metabolically and you're getting too much hydrogen ions, so it's causing an acidosis, driving the equation this way, and increasing the amount of CO2, the lungs can compensate very quickly, start to breathe off that CO2, normalize this equation, make it so there's not more hydrogen ions because you're breathing off this CO2, and maintain a normal blood pH. And that can happen very quickly. So it's just something to note when you're kind of in the clinical arena, and you're looking at primary disorders that are metabolic, you will often have a close to normal blood pH within minutes because the lungs will compensate very quickly. So even if you're acidotic or alkalotic, you might not be acidemic or alkalemic because your lungs are compensating and kind of returning that blood pH closer to normal. Whereas if the primary disorder is respiratory, you will probably be acidemic or alkalemic for hours to days while the kidneys change kind of how much hydrogen and bicarb they're holding onto and excreting to try to compensate to then return that blood pH back to normal. All right, so that's all we had for this video. Let us know what thoughts, comments, questions you have down below. Hope it was helpful. Um, definitely check out the rest of the series, including that first video. Um, watch them all the way through, and by the end, we hope that you would kind of be masters of acid base. Um, otherwise, Subscribe, hit the bell button, check out our other videos, all that good stuff. Stay well, keep learning, and we will see you all next time.